Welcome back to Bush History. I'm David Bush, and this is my ongoing series called The Presidents. Right now, we're going to take a look at Franklin Pierce and see what occurred while he was president of the United States. 14th president of the United States, let's go. Franklin Pierce, number 14, his vice president was Rufus King. That's a cool name. Political party is a Democrat, his term of office 1853 to 1857. So again, a one-term president. You'll find the 1850s is very tumultuous because during the 1850s, we have a lot of presidents. Think about it. We start with Zachary Taylor, we go to, Will, we go to Millard Fillmore, then we go to Franklin Pierce, then we go to James Buchanan, and finally we're going to end up in the election of 1860 with Abraham Lincoln. So you have five names influenced in the 1850s. You know there's going to be a lot of turbulence. As I said, term of office 1853 to 1857, who came before him and after him, what were their political parties? Millard Fillmore was a Whig, was before Franklin Pierce, and James Buchanan followed him and he was a Democrat. Any unusual circumstance? Well, the, the Democrats couldn't figure out who to nominate is really what it comes down to. There was a lot of discussion, who should be president, who should be president, who should be president. And they couldn't reach a consensus. So out of nowhere, Franklin Pierce comes up. As a matter of fact, Franklin Pierce doesn't show up until, uh, where is it, 35th ballot at the Democratic nominating convention. So he was out of nowhere, he was out of left field. In fact, he, they even thought that he was a president more in body than in intellect. They thought they could control him, and that really wasn't the way it was. The electors for Franklin Pierce, 254, and Winfield Scott, 42. The office, any catchphrase? Yes, compromise candidate. The Democrats finally got together and said, yeah, we can do it, Franklin Pierce, we can control him. Wasn't going to happen that way. When he left office, was it by choice, defeat, natural death, assassination, or resignation? Pierce had committed to being a one-term president, so he did not run in 1856. He knew he'd been a compromised choice, and he said, okay, I'll take the job, but I'm not going to do it twice. Domestic issues and events. Big things happen while Franklin Pierce is president. We get the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which led to popular sovereignty in the Kansas and Nebraska territories. Remember, Stephen A. Douglas had hatched this plan to build a railroad through the Kansas and Nebraska territories. But in order to protect that railroad, we needed organized states, and the railroad needed stops to make money in organized areas. So he proposed that the Kansas and Nebraska territories, as they became states, the people in these states would vote whether they'd be free or slave. It was a disastrous thing, because what happens until they vote? They're going to fight with each other, and they're going to end up bloodying each other. So, in 1856, we get the little wars going on in Kansas called Bleeding Kansas. And then, as a result of Bleeding Kansas, in 1856, we get the whole Summer, Sumner Brooks affair, in which Preston Brooks almost beats Charles Sumner to death in his Senate office, because Charles Sumner had been critical of Brooks's uncle over his, uh, his feelings about slavery in the new territories. So violence had actually now come to the Senate and sectionalism is growing throughout the presidency and throughout the country. Foreign policy event, the Gadsden Purchase. The Gadsden Purchase is a land at the southern tip of the Mexican session with, on the Mexican border. And it was purchased with the idea of building the southern portion of the transcontinental railroad through relatively flat desert land. It never happened, but that was the intention of it with the Ostend Manifesto in 1854. And this was the idea that we, we, might, might, we might want to acquire Cuba and add Cuba to the United States, and it was secret negotiations. And once the negotiations were found out about, Franklin Pierce backed up and said, oh, we're not doing that. And then in 1855, we have Nicaragua. William Walker, a pro-slavery pro -slavery guy, goes down to Nicaragua and ferments this whole rebellion and he becomes president of Nicaragua. And Franklin Pierce turns around and recognizes him as the president of Nicaragua, thereby substantiating his right on the office, angered an awful lot of people. So a lot happens while Franklin Pierce is president, and he's only president for four years, but we've kind of lit the fuse in this 1850 time period. It starts with the Compromise of 1850 and it's going to end with the beginning of the, of the Civil War in 1861. So for now, I'm David Bush, and this is Bush History. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.